WNDS Sports presents Candlepin Stars and Strikes, featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from all over New England, and now in our 14th season. Your hosts for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Lita Lanes in Nashua. I'm Dick Lusk with Mike Morin. It's Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV 50. We've reached the top rung of the ladder. It's the championship match of our first series. With the winner moving on to the Tournament of Champions, it's the top seed and the number three seed meeting for all the marbles. Right, Dick. $1,000 up for grab today to our first place bowler. Runner-up gets $500, but just as importantly is all the bonus money we found out the last couple of weeks. Uh, Gary Carrington has pretty much broken the bank, so the uh, $1,000 almost seems anticlimactic, but of course we know that's not the case. Let's take a look at Gary Carrington. He was originally our third seed. He's won two weeks in a row carrying a 135 average out of lovely Plastow, New Hampshire. He was our third place finisher, by the way, in the Easter Day Singles Tournament for $1,000. So no stranger to bowling for big money and lots of pressure, Gary Carrington. And his partner today, hard to believe after a nearly 25-year career in New England uh, and almost 100 television appearances, Tommy Olsta, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, is uh, the number two seed in the Easter Tournament. And let's take a look at his style. Not that you haven't seen him on television before, because of course you have. He is uh, out of Sturbridge, Massachusetts, a 130 average, and he is one of the very few bowlers with a better than 200 high single at 209 and a high triple at 504. So the stage is set for a very exciting match today, Dick. With nearly 100 television appearances for Tom Olsa, this is his first time on Channel 50. A great match coming up for our first championship of our new series of 1997 on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS. We'll be back with the championship match right after this. Here you see the seeds that we began our series with, with Craig Holbrook losing to Dave Richards the first week, Richards losing to Carrington the second week, and then Carrington defeating Jeff Atkins last week, setting up today's match between Tom Olsta and Jeff Atkins with the winner advancing to our Tournament of Champions and winning the $1,000 that goes with today's title. So Gary Carrington will be first to bowl as we begin. On WNDS TV 50, Dick Lutz with Mike Moore, and happy to have you with us from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. And this is the match we've been waiting for. As you pointed out earlier, the uh, TV 50 debut of the great Tommy Olsen. The triple strike is back to uh, $525. No one won it last week. Which Gary Carrington won it the week before. Gary had a couple of chances last week. He did. Yep. Still made uh, some nice pocket change, though. Almost 200 bucks, I believe, last week. Made 600 in bonus money the week before, a couple of hundred last week. Sends the wood flying, but doesn't knock anything over. Well, he's not been a notorious uh, fast starter the last couple of weeks, but wow, what a finish in the final five frames of each of his last two third games. Phenomenal. <laughs> That's quite a shot for a 10 box right there. Watch him pick up this split. 479. Not an easy shot. Doesn't get any better than that, though. Right on the uh, cut shot. Tried to kick that 10 pin over, but uh, couldn't quite get his leg down the lane far enough. He gave it a shot, though, he, didn't he? He did indeed. a spare for Gary Carrington. Just kept it on the lane long enough. Yeah, if the lane been any uh, longer, it would have uh, not been a, a good shot. Well, Tommy Olsten now for his first uh, TV 50 shot. Olsten with a 130 average, a high single of 209, high triple of 504. He finished second in the Easter Sunday roll-off here at Lidl Lanes with a 2706. His first shot on TV 50 is through the middle. His high string was his very first string on Easter Sunday, a 170. His low string in that 20 string competition was a 110, his second string. He went from a 170 in the first string to a 110 in the second string. He opens with a nine box here. A young man who's been bowling professionally on television since the age of 16 in 1973. Phenomenal record for him, 92 appearances. 
and a half Worcester. Well, it's $1,000 to our winner today and $500 to our runner-up. And the winner will advance to our Tournament of Champions, which we'll have more information on down the road. The bonus ball contest is coming back to Stars and Strikes. We'll fill you in on that a bit later on. Olster with an eight box and 17 through two. Now Gary Carrington working on a spare. That's the way to work on a spare with a strike. Two marks in a row and looking for bonus money. Watch Gary Carrington. Nail that head pin. Everything else just follows. He's on the head pin again, but a little soft this time. Still with a shot at some bonus money. The way that wood is stacked up, it looks to be advantageous to him. The 4-5 and the 7-8 with two pieces of wood that appear to be frozen to the two front pins. Oh. Didn't think that would happen. But, well, not enough body English, perhaps. A 10 box. You don't want to wait around for Tommy Olsted too long. I'm sure Gary realizes that. At a 59 uh, score in the fourth frame, Tommy Olsted up in the third. An eight pin drop with some wood rolling away he'd rather that would stay close but it's not going to yeah it maybe well, it's back. coming back it's taking another one more turn and it might be okay well that's his shot I think to, well I don't know if he He's has a shot at it with that front wood there now tough to squeeze by that pin sticking out on the right I think that's the play though oh. first mark for Tom Olsta comes in the third frame Watch it again. He plays that front wood and gets the ricochet. Didn't even use that second exactly. piece of wood. The, the wood sticking over the, uh, the channel did all the work. Took out both pins. And a strike. Well, our gallery is getting what they came to see today. Two power bowlers. Watch Tom Olster's strike. Two marks in a row for Olster. Both bowlers are warming to the occasion. Carrington answers with a strike. Watch it again as that last one gets kicked out. Pretty similar to his third frame strike when the five pin fell forward as well. Carrington looking for another one in the pocket. Will it go? Look at Gary Carrington on the ground. <laughs> He's praying. <laughs> he couldn't get it to go. We'll have to ask him a little later if he went to church earlier today, <laughs> because that wouldn't have hurt. Gary was on his knees, rolling a little bit, just trying anything he could to get that thing to go over. And a spare. That's uh, four marks already out of six boxes, and uh, Gary has not left a pin standing today. He's got a perfect game going. All right, now Tom Olster working on a strike. Right straight through the middle. Mm. The one and the five. You want to hit the uh, two or the three pin very, very lightly to, to shake him up as he attempted to do. That's a six box for Tom. And a 57 half puts him down by 22 pins. Strong nine pin drop.
And a spare for Tom Olsta. 40 years old from Sturbridge. Began bowling at the age of two in Oxford. Bowls out of Bay Path in East Brookfield, Massachusetts right now. His grandfather taught him how to bowl. Gary Carrington working on a spare with a six pin drop. Waiting for the wood to settle. A lot of parallel wood here. Tried to get the pin to jump over, but couldn't quite get it to go. And a 10 box. He continues to leave nothing standing. He's off to a better start. It looks, though, that he was his last two weeks when he had 114 two weeks ago, 128 last week in his first string. And as, as we know, Dick, he's a notoriously strong closer at 182 and 170. Knew he didn't throw a good one, but still continues to get the fall. A lot of help on the deck. Yeah, with all the wood that's on the floor there, he has a shot at this. 179 and 10. There it is. Watch it again. This is a very makeable shot with all of the wood that's laying on the deck. That's the fifth mark of the first string for Gary Carrington. Now Tom Olsta, who has three marks himself, tries to answer. That's a five fill on the spare for Olster. Gave it a good run. So much power on that ball to get over and, and take out that one single pin. The uh, average bowler generally doesn't have that kind of uh, finesse. Ten box for Olsta. Tom also a member of the world team that will be competing against Canada up in Halifax, Nova Scotia in November as is Gary Carrington. Gary Carrington has been on the team for many years, but will not be able to participate this year. Look at that pin go. Finally, it goes over after traveling six inches on the deck. Well, it took a second pin to uh, convince it to go over, as you'll see here on our replay. Watch how far that pin moves. Maybe it wasn't quite six inches, but it was a long way. One, there it goes. There it's the going. One. There it goes. It's still <laughs> going. A thing of beauty. Gary Carrington working on a spare, gets his six pin fill. And a spare. Now we are looking at a possible bonus money situation again, Dick, going into the 10th frame. These pins are flying, sixth mark of the string. And probably looking at a 155, 160 game anyway, with a decent fill and a mark. Nine pin fill. It's pretty decent. This is for bonus money. Got the four pin there that just is covered by that dead wood. Yeah, you serving. Can't decide where it wants to stop. Yeah, it looks like it's going to serve as a roadblock, unfortunately for him, because I don't think it's going to be touching. No, he's going to have to hit that piece of wood right on the nose. The only shot he has, unless he goes to the wood on the right and takes a shot that way, but I doubt it. Oh, look at that. $50 in bonus money. And a shot at a 160 game with a strike here in the 10th for his fill ball on the spare. Seven marks in the game. It, by far his best start here in week number three for him. And a strike on top of it, a 160 and $70 in bonus money. 
for Gary Carrington. Putting Tommy Ulster squarely behind the eight ball going into game number two. Let's see how Ulster responds. He's not working on a strike right here. That wood won't angle itself to, to help Tom out. What a shot. One of the greatest men bowlers in the last three decades, and you see why today, folks. He didn't use the dead wood at all. He just did it. Leaves himself another split. Still going to find himself a good 30-plus pins behind if he doesn't pick this up. But he's the kind of bowler that can make it back, as you know. Judging by the way he made the last one, this one should be a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> Let's have another look at this piece of art here. That's fifty dollars in bonus money for Tom Olsta. I never, shot. never a doubt in my mind. <laughs> I know you called it, Dick. And a nine on top of that. Imagine that, a 138, and you're still down by 22 pins. But a strong finish for Tom Olsta to make it a match after one. A great first string here at Lita Lanes. It was Gary Carrington, 160. Tom Olsta, 138. Don't go away. Great match still to come on WNDS Stars and Strikes. The bonus ball contest is coming back to WNDS TV 50 Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Send your postcard to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashville, 03063. Don't forget to include your name, address, and pick out a number, 1 through 10, and hopefully our winning bowler will match your number, and you'll win a prize from WNDS TV 50 as Candlepin Stars and Strikes Boning Ball Contest is coming back. Get your postcards into Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, 03063. It'll be Tom Olsta starting first in game two. 160 for Gary Carrington, 138 for Tom Olsta in the first game. Both bowlers finishing extremely well, and the crowd here really getting a kick out of the uh, marks put on the board by these guys. Here's Olsta starting off on the head pin, but a seven pin drop and a tough spare leave. The reverse triangle, the five, the six, and the nine. Going to need some sidewall action or a little luck or both. Neither. Yeah, snake eyes on that shot. $70 in bonus money in the first string for Gary Carrington, 50 for Olsta. Olsta starts out with a nine box here in the second game. The winner of the game wins $1,000. The runner up, $500. The winner will advance to our Tournament of Champions. Olsta with the five pin drop on the first ball. It's One the uh, four horsemen and the nine in back deck. I want to thank Ray Simino, the owner of uh, Lita Lanes in Nashua, and Sean Howard, the manager, for all of their help in putting the program together today. Also with another nine box and an 18. Sean was very helpful in getting our computer scoring system. Giving us a crash underway. course on operating it here. Chris Bovear is the in-house scorer for our fans here. Carrington starts out with seven, eight, nine. It's what we've come to expect from Gary Carrington today in the last couple of weeks. Just he's, unbelievable pin action. He's half a show himself just watching him after he throws the ball. This is as lively as I've seen him in a long time. I mean, he's always been a pretty animated guy, but he's had plenty of reason today. And a spare for Gary Carrington to start out. Well, just adding to his lead. Our TV 50 crew includes director Vic Cross, Larry Taylor, Dave McCarthy, Paul Hunter, and Dave Cates in the truck. And our cameras manned by Bob Dald, Joel Tupper, and Steve Drouse. A little thin on that shot, the ball going away to the right. 
kind of fading, leave, leaving a cluster of four on the left side and the sole ten pin in the corner with one piece of wood. Could help him out, but not, not a lot. It's angled in the right way if you can kick it off the boards, off the sidewall. Can't hurt him, I don't think. Gary wants to think about it a little bit. If you'd like to join us for our next taping, we'll be here on the 18th of November. Which will be actually this Tuesday. 10 o'clock in the morning. Lidl Lanes. Got a shot at it. It didn't quite get there. Mm, everything but the 10. So 10 o'clock in the morning, November 18th. Lidl Lanes, Route 101 West in Nashua. 10 box for Gary Carrington. 25 through 2, 7 pin lead. Watch him almost make the spare. Not quite. Didn't quite get the bounce off the sideboard. Tom Olstaw. Out of Sturbridge, Mass. Works for Frito-Lay in sales. Has been doing that for uh, quite a few years. He's 40 years old. And the spare for Tom Olstaw. He needs to string a couple together, Dick, because I, I don't see Gary Carrington uh, fading at all. If anything, the third string is, or uh, well, of course, this is the second string, but he's got the better part of his uh, match ahead of him, probably. Tough to improve on a 160 first game. Holster right in the pocket. Watch out. There's still some action out there. And the wood rolls by it. And the wood's not going to help him. He just needs the wood to leave him enough room to get the ball by the wood. Yeah, because the, the, the pin. The ball could easily deflect off the dead wood and wrap right around the 10. He's got it. A couple of spares in a row. And an opportunity for more bonus money for Tom Olston next time he comes onto the lanes. Gary Carrington on lane 34. Both these guys can throw marks. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> How far did that pin move? <laughs> that moved almost all the way over to the six pin position. Probably a good eight or nine inches. That was unbelievable. Of all the ones we've seen, that one takes the cake. Some of the fans gesturing to give him a strike in the audience can't do that. Watch this one again, and watch how far that pin moved. Here it is. It's the five. Now it's the six. Almost the seven. And, and there wasn't even another pin there to to, uh, to wedge it in to stand it up. Or almost the ten, actually. It would have gone from the six yeah. to the ten in the corner. But boy, oh boy, that thing moved. Right in the pocket again, strong. And a nine pin drop. Taking an early lead in this match as well to add to his... Uh, margin of uh, 22 pins his first game and another spare for Gary Carrington so Tom Olsta puts up a couple of marks and Gary Carrington matches him after four frames of our second game we have a couple of high scores in progress we'll be right back to Lita Lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV Through four frames of the second game, both bowlers are putting the marks on the board. Gary Carrington has three marks in four frames. Tom Olsta, two in four. Both are working on two in a row. And Olsta is on lane 34, now trying to fill a spare. And he fills it with nine. He's bowling great, and he's losing by 30 pins. And a spare, $50 in bonus money for Tom Olsta with three marks in a row. He had 50 in the first game as well, so he has 100 bucks to go today. Today, And he'll leave with no less than $500 if he uh, does not win the match. Nudges the head pin. An eight pin fill on the spare, looking for his fourth mark in a row. Couldn't get it to go. A little too direct. Uh, couldn't make use of the, uh, the dead wood over on the right side. And that'll be 
be a 10 box for Tom Olsta. 84 through 6. He's going to have 84 through 6 and be trailing. Yeah, because Carrington shows no signs of letting up. 160 in the first game for Gary Carrington to 138 for Tom Olsta. Last week, Carrington closed with a 170. The week before, a 182. And there's a strike for three marks in a row for Gary Carrington. $50 more in bonus money. Watch it one more time. He is fun to watch. So another $50 to the Gary Carrington Christmas Shopping Fund. And eight with the first ball. You think these guys are happy to see Candlepin Bowling come back? <laughs> I know their families are. Yeah, he he kind of dropped that one, didn't quite get the follow through that he had on his uh, previous ball and didn't get quite the action for the four and the seven to remain standing. Looking for four marks in a row and another $20 and he just picked the four. Clean pick. And a nine box for Gary Carrington. So he's up to a 30 pin lead, a little better than halfway through our three string match this afternoon, on his way to a possible first prize of $1,000 in cash. Well, 30 pins can go in a hurry. We've seen that. Oh, sure. The bounces one a little bit. 1, 4, 7, 9, 10. Still the 1, 4, 7, 9, 10. And a 7 box for Tom Olsta. Not what he needs right now. And is more than capable of doing it. He has won his share of bowling tournaments on television over 24 years. Our triple strike contest is at $525. Hoping to take some sidewall action to get the three on the other side. Didn't happen, the uh, three pin wrapping around the six. And a nine box, and an even 100 through eight for Tom Olsta. Falling a little bit further behind here because uh, Gary Carrington now is up against two non-mark frames from Tommy. Half Worcester. You haven't seen one of those in a little while. In a little while. Gary's been so accurate on the head pin, there's been uh, no reason for the half Worcesters. I don't think we've seen one quarter Worcester all day, though, have we? False start on that one for Gary. Right there. It's the way to do it. Slice it very, very thin. As good as these guys are, they still leave the half Worcester enough times to still shoot at it frequently enough to be good at it. Gary pulls out of the park place at Wyndham. He'll take a 10 box the hard way. An 11 pin lead in this game to go with the 22 pin lead he had after the first game. So 33 overall. He can add to that with a mark here if he can split up. He cannot. And no help at all from the wood. It's the two, the six, and the ten. Tough shot. He cut it a little too fine. Gave it a great shot, though, didn't he? He gave it a run. And a 10 box. Picks up another pin. 12 pin lead in the game. 34 pin lead in the match. But as you said earlier, a, uh, a lead of 30 pins or whatever can evaporate very quickly with two or three strikes in a row, as we saw a couple of weeks ago. Olster trying to eat it up in a hurry. Gets nine. And a 
spare for Tom Olsta. That'll help the cause. He'll certainly need another one going into the 10th frame to just get some of this ground back, and that's assuming that uh, Carrington doesn't answer with marks of his own. And you can never assume that with Gary Carrington. Tom turned and looked back in a hurry. Don't know if he kicked the uh, ball return. I don't know. Somehow I think his uh, bowling intuition told him that he was going to get a bad split, and he was right. Yeah, waiting for the wood. Maybe just uh, contemplating exactly how to go for this. He was tr trying to play that front piece of wood, but didn't quite get it. And a 10 box. And a 126. 264, two game total for Tom Olsta. His first appearance on WNDS TV 50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Gary didn't like it, but he got a six out of it. Double wood once again behind the a three pin. Be the tough one to get out. And he'll take it. He continues to apply the pressure. Kicks it off the side wall and got the spare. <laughs> Trying to get something to go. Well, you can never have enough pins against Tommy Olsta going into a third match. No matter how many you've got, sometimes it just isn't enough. So he's going to try to take another spare right here for some extra pins in the 10th. Which of our earlier bowlers was telling us that Tom Olsta needed a triple strike to beat him? It was uh, Craig Holbrook earlier on. Here's a shot at the spare, and he can't quite pull it off. Looked pretty good. In one of the TV matches, Holbrook led Olsta going into the final box. Olsta needed a triple strike and got a triple strike. To nobody's surprise, by the way. And a 10 box and a 139, so he adds 13 pins to his total. And he leads by 35 after two. It's Gary Carrington with a two-string total of 299. Tom Olsen with a 264. The third and final game coming up as Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua. We are ready to go with our third game in this match between Gary Carrington and Tom Olsta. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Happy to have you with us on WNDS-TV for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It's Gary Carrington for Plasto. Gary takes a 35-pin advantage into this game, which, as we said a little earlier, is not always enough against... Uh, the likes of Tommy Olsta. Hasn't really been on his game today with 138 and 20, 126. Gary with a 160 first game and a 139 last game. Opens with a 10 box here in game three. For those of you just joining us and hearing Mike Morin's voice saying, that voice sounds familiar. You hear Michael every afternoon during the week on WZID-FM 95.7, taking you home from wherever you may be going in New Hampshire. A nine-pin drop. How long have you been at ZID? Uh, three years, actually, this week. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, 13 years in New England uh, by way of New York City, Washington, and Detroit. So I love New England, and this is where I'll stay. How'd you become a candlepin junkie? <laughs> well, I was a bowling junkie since I was you know, about six years old and uh, moved east here 13 years ago. Very little 10 pin. I said, this looks like a great new game to try, and I've loved it ever since. Glad to be a part of a Stars and Strikes with you, Dick. When I met Mike and found out how much he knew about candlepin bowling, I was awestruck. <laughs> and a shot by Gary Carrington. 
Well, I've had an opportunity to uh, to meet a lot of the bowlers over the years. I did a little uh, public relations and organizational work for the International Candleton Bowling Association and got to be friendly with a lot of these guys. And, and you, you mentioned this a couple weeks ago. It's a tight fraternity of guys that do like each other. And women as well, a lot of uh, terrific uh, lady bowlers as well in the pro ranks. Tom Olsta looking for the spare and a great shot, but one still stands, the 10 pin. A lot of these guys are teammates on the uh, U.S. team that competes in the international competition with Canada. The next event coming in November in Halifax, actually this month, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It is an international game, but it's a, a shame that Candlepin Bowling is really uh, so isolated that it's the New England states and uh, the Maritimes of uh, Canada. It's a game that uh, I don't understand why it really hasn't uh, become as popular around the rest of the country. It escapes me why. Also waiting for the pin to settle down. And he'll just pick it. Take it the easy way. Now you and I probably would have gone for the wood, Dick. At least I would have. But do the pros go right at it? They're that confident. Whichever way I would have gone, I probably would have missed it and made it the other way, but I would have told you that that's the way I was going. I see. An eight pin fill. Appreciate your honesty. Can't catch it that time. So both bowlers will have a mark and a 10 in their first two boxes. And Gary Carrington will be happy to play that way the rest of the game. He will indeed with a, a cushion of uh, several dozen pins already coming into this match. I thought we were gonna see another one dance and stay up. <laughs> He's getting tired after all that dancing today, I think. The wood should not be a factor. He can go right at the pin, and he does. Well, the Nutcracker opens a couple weeks at the Wang Center. I wouldn't be looking for Gary Carrington out there. His uh, dancing will be uh, <laughs> confined to the bowling lanes. That one went. Will it take the 10 pin? No. No, let's not get greedy. Another nine pin drop, a chance at more bonus money. You mean there's some left? And I don't know that, if we give it that. That's a nine. I don't think we he, give waves, it. he waves nine. it off. And in candlepin bowling, the decision rests on the bowler himself. And he waved it off, as he uh, should have. having a little fun with one of the youngsters in our audience. Tom Olster with a seven drop. Olster tries to slide the pin over and can't get it to go. Ten box for Olster, 38 through three. Trailing in this game by ten. Right in the pocket, leaves a mm. solid four. Nothing even came close to the four pin, which is hard to believe at the uh, velocity he wheels that thing. And a mark for Tom Olsta, his second mark of the game. And the fourth box complete for both bowlers. We're headed down the home stretch in our championship game between Tom Olsta and Gary Carrington. Six boxes remain. Don't go away. We'll be back with the fin finish right after this. Gary Carrington ready to go in the fifth box of the third game. Carrington leading by about 44 pins, pending what Tom Olsta gets on his spare fill when he takes to the lanes again. Right through the middle for Gary Carrington. Spread eagle and the nine pin. He'll probably go to the left. Logic would seem to want to go to the right, but you go to the left. 
Well, up the middle isn't exactly the strategy he had in mind. When in doubt, go right straight down the middle. <laughs> when you can't make up your mind. <laughs> That's how we do it, Dick. A five box for Gary Carrington. Well, he's got a nice cushion. Uh, he can just shake it off and hope for a better uh, frame this time around, which no doubt he'll have. Again, right on the head pin, a little too full. Opening the door ever so slightly for Tom yeah. Olsted to step back into this match. He is working on a spare in the fourth. That wood could be advantageous to Gary. Oh, Gary. beautiful. Beautiful shot. That was the only place he could have hit it to make that shot go. He did it perfectly, just to the left of the front pin, caught the dead wood and slid it over. Olsta on a spare. Seven pin drop, good piece of wood between the six and the 10. Get a few pins back here opposite a Gary Carrington five frame. Missed the front pin. And a 10 box. Tom works pretty fast, always been a fairly quick bowler. Up against a spare in this box by Gary Carrington. Holster right on the head pin, drops nine. Tom's worked for Frito-Lay for 10 years, works out of Worcester. Should uh, remind everybody, Dick, that our next uh, taping of Candlepin Stars and Strikes for TV 50 is coming up two days from today, this coming Tuesday at about 10 in the morning will be our first of several matches. So uh, join us in the audience. We appreciate everybody turning out for today's action, the championship match for a $1,000 first prize. Gary Carrington. And a strike for Carrington on top of a spare. Here it comes again. Perfect pocket shot. And this is the time in the match in the third game that historically, at least the last two weeks, he comes through with a couple strikes. Here it is again, right in the pocket. Now he's not going to get a strike, but he's certainly set up well for bonus money. He's trying to talk to the Deadwood as you see him <laughs> gesture. Raising his arms. Yeah. That wood's in good shape for him. I think so. And a spare for Gary Carrington. Three marks in a row. Another $50 in bonus money. $120. $170. Well, for three Gary. drop, unfortunately, for Tom on the spare fill. an eight box for Tom Olsta. And he's opposite a spare in the eighth frame. Right oh. through the middle of the spread eagle. That is a heck of a shot. Mm. Only the three pin stands. Ten box for Olsten, 96 through eight. Watch Tom Olsten almost convert this spread eagle. And the action and the dead wood just not quite getting there. Carrington working on three marks in a row. A seven pin drop. Well, Gary is going to be well into the 400s. This will by far be his best three-game series of the last three weeks, 417 and 408 his other two weeks. He's at 418 now. With another cu couple boxes to wrap it up. Almost picked up the split.
129 with a box to go for Gary Carrington. He's at 428 for the match. And a strike. Well, there is time for more bonus money. There is. Another two strikes. He's got uh, $525, the triple strike pool. He has mathematically shut the door on Tom Olsta. He has, sadly enough, but somebody has to win. Somebody has to lose. Gary Carrington looking for a two. There it is. Now we're looking at a $525 bowl ball to close the show. On top of the $1,000 he's going to win for uh, this particular uh, series. And the $600 series. he won in bonus money a couple of weeks ago and $200 he won last week. It's going to be a great Christmas at the Carrington household this year. This is for $525. You watch. Missed the head pin, but it's coming back. And a seven. 156, I have. 156 it is, and a 455 series. I know that Tommy Ulster will be back again to TV 50 Stars and Strikes. Wow. Rather convincing victory today by Gary Carrington, who climbs up the ladder from third seed to overtake the top seed, Tom Ulster, who comes in with a 10 box. Even a triple strike uh, only pulls him within 20 pins. Not to be. Five, the seven, and the eight with some helpful wood. Our score doesn't match the score on the board in front, but I think we're right. As Olsta finishes with a nine box. And I have him at 115. They have him at 107 on the board, but we'll double check it when we come back. I have 156 for Gary Carrington in the third and a triple of 455 and 379 is the triple for Tom Olster with a 115 final game. It's academic as Gary Carrington is the winner. We'll come back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment. The correct totals in the third string of our match this afternoon. It was Gary Carrington, 156, Tom Olsta, 107. And the triple scores were 455 for Carrington, 371 for Tom Olsta. And Gary Carrington's been red hot the last couple of weeks. The New Hampshire native prevailed over our friend from uh, Massachusetts, Tom Olsta's first visit here. But I can assure everybody Tom Olsta will be back once again to Stars and Strikes. Well, he's used to picking up checks on television. Let's have him do it again. Tom Olsta, come on up. Tommy. A check for $500 for being the runner-up. Congratulations to you. There's also another $100 in bonus money, which we have for you. And your first appearance on Channel 50 wasn't a winning one, but uh, hopefully we'll see you back before too long. Oh, well, I'll be back, but it was very interesting. Gary bowled great. I mean, uh, he threw a super ball, box for box, and when he had a bad break, he was right there. He should have had him. I mean, he unbelievable, unbelievable. He's been unbelievable the last couple of weeks. Thanks to you, and good luck to you. Hope to see you again soon. Tom Olsta from Sturbridge, Massachusetts. And now our champion, Gary Carrington. This man has been on fire for the last three weeks. And let's reach in and pull out the check for $1,000 for winning the tournament. Hold that up. Another $190 in bonus money, or $170 in bonus money, I guess it was. You've added it up the last three weeks. That's uh, some pocket money you've got to walk around with. Yeah, I've done very well. Uh, I, I had a good day. I knew I had to throw uh, three great games against Tommy as he's, uh, he's the best there is, so. I owe Mike probably about 19 more, you know? <laughs> but, uh, what what I, goes I, around comes around, yeah. right, eventually? Right. Uh, bowling against Tommy, that's, uh, that's it right there. You know, you're bowling against the best, and that's what you want, so I'm glad everything went well for me today. Gary, congratulations, and we'll see you soon on our Tournament of Champions. Thank you very much. Gary Carrington, our winner here this afternoon, beating Tom Olsta.
And now we get set for series number two. Yes, there have been more qualifying roll-offs going on. We'll have a set of five new bowlers starting next Sunday. And the taping, if you'd like to come watch it live here at uh, Lita Lanes, will be this Tuesday starting at about 10 in the morning. That does it for our series for the first time around for 1997. Our champion, Gary Carrington. For Mike Moore and I'm Dick Lutz from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.